Okay, please sign in. Five members present. Okay, Ryan, are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes, Your Honor. Okay, can I get a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item two, Citizens Forum. Anybody in the audience who would like to address the council on anything uh, that is not either a part of new business or public hearings, please come up to the uh, podium. And, and if you're here to speak uh, to recognize uh, Councilman Parks, maybe we'll wait till we read the uh, proclamation that we have. I know there are a lot of people here that might want to speak wanna, to that. Yeah. yeah, why don't we wait until we get to the proclamation? Why don't we do Citizens Forum and then we'll wait for anybody that wants to make any comments in regards to Councilman Parks. So. Good evening. Um, I'm standing tonight, Rochelle Long, as the president and CEO of Taste of the Junction. And I just wanted to publicly come and thank the city and the council uh, because we received a Bravo Award. This was our first time putting in the application and we got an award, so I'm just. <laughs> and I see our Polk County representative, Angela's here, so thank the Polk County Board of Supervisors as well. I know there's um, several um, government agencies that are part of that, City West Des Moines and Polk County Board of Supervisors. And so um, I just wanna say that uh, I just want to read this. The grant from the Bravo Greater Des Moines, it will allow us to have an immediate impact on our Labor Day weekend. We host a multicultural festival and uh, a history and storyteller night that's called the Junction Speak. Um, it's going to have a positive influence on our region's community, our members, and our visitors. And without your support, this couldn't be done. These and other programs help to enhance the quality of life and boost the economic development through arts, cultural, and heritage. So I just want to again thank you for allowing Taste of the Junction to be a part of the process here in West Des Moines. Thank you so very much. And especially Matt, Matt McKinney, he's on that, uh, on the Bravo board. So really, to each and every one of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. 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 Anybody else for Citizens Forum that would like to address the council? Step on up, uh, Milton, and give us your name and address for the record. Oh, if Milton, if you're here to talk about Councilman Parks. I'm, I, you... That's one sentence, okay. but that's not the essence of okay. Perfect. Go ahead. So I'm here at your direction. It's not often I would allow you to tell me where to go. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't think I don't know that. <laughs> Don't think I don't double know it. <laughs> so ahead, anyway, ahead, my Milton. name is uh, Milton Cole Duvall. I live at 2001 South 40th Court here in West Des Moines. Uh, thank you for calling me, Mr. Mayor. There, were, there are several notations I would like to make. First of all, thanks to all of you on the City Council very much for your proclamation and support of Ukraine. The first recommendation came out of the Human Rights Commission per Vice Chair Rich Salas and, and, and Renee Hardman. But thank you for presenting the proclamation, Mr. Mayor, and thanks to the entire council for voting for it. Thanks to you also for your work at the Vigil for Peace in Ukraine, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Hardman and Diversity Officer Audrey Kennis. All of you spoke and were, and I heard people recalling several days thereafter and ensuing weeks what y'all have said. You made, a, uh, you made a, a difference. Thanks to those of you that attended. Thanks also to Council Member Hardman and Audrey Kennis for all of the work you did to facilitate the gathering. Our actions are increasingly meaningful, meaningful as we stand with President Zelensky against the war and against ensuing of these last several days war crimes. I'm having several large flags made that will be shown in the schools. I hope that uh, the mayor and the city manager will find a place where one can be displayed here. So later on, there'll be a proclamation to honor the life of former council member Parks. 
He was a pay setter in West Des Moines. He was the first council member I ever met. And I remember that gathering, that handshake until today. It is interesting that we honor Mr. Parks on this day, the anniversary of another, of another event in 1965. This April day, some 57 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King was murdered. Dr. King, a man of peace, justice, and fair play for all was gunned down in, in Memphis. Having known of Dr. King on the march from Selma to Montgomery, I, my sadness is heightened. So many of us dream for a better world, a better country. In 1965, the year of Reverend King's death, a play, Man of La Mancha, opened on Broadway. Please bear with me as I recite the lyrics of that, of the impossible dream, which we're about. To dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star. This is our quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. To fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this, that each of you men and women stood from afar, sore and covered with scars, still strove with your last ounce of courage to fight the unbeatable foe, to reach the unreachable star. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Milton. And uh, thank you as well for the uh, inspiration for the Day of Solidarity with Ukraine. And, uh, you know, you were instrumental in getting that done, as was uh, Councilwoman Hardman and Audrey Kennis, uh, as well as Dr. Rich Salas and the West Point Human Rights Commission. So thank you all for making that happen. That was an unbelievable event, uh, very moving, and uh, really appreciate everything you did to make that happen. So thanks for your words. Okay, anybody else for a citizen's forum at this time? Okay. Former Councilwoman Loretta Seaman. 2414, 160th Court. Oh, we'll forgive you for that one. <laughs> um, that's a tough act to follow, but I know one person would have been loved to have been here, and that's Bob. Bob and I served together for many, many, many years. On behalf of the mayor and those that could not be here, we are so thankful that you're recognizing this unusual man, this very special person. The Long family, we worked together so much. Ward 3 and Valley Junction were next door. So we were kind of attached at the hip. We went back and forth depending on what the issue was. Bob was a very close friend, but he cared very deeply for this city and for Ward 1. He spent many, many days down there and sometimes drug me along with him and we would fight for the rights of all people. The Martin Luther King thing was something I was gonna mention because Bob was our Martin Luther King. He was a person that never stopped, that always cared. He raised his family, his family and his children were my family and my children's friends, and we spent a lot of time together. I know how tough it is to be a council member. I applaud all of you, particularly the young man that not only took my place but went on to be mayor. And I thank you for all the hours you put. It's a tough time now, as the man before me said. It's a rough time, but we can make it because we care, because we know the right path, and we're going to follow that path. So thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of Bob. Thanks for being here. Thank Thanks you. for your kind words. Okay, anybody else for a citizen's forum uh, in the chamber? And then I will ask uh, for a citizen's forum, anybody online after 
everybody in the chamber. Hi, Go everyone. Ahead. Renee Johanningmeyer at 612 Walnut Street. And I am I'm calling, I'm asking if we have any updates from a letter that was sent out from Nick Waggy on March 31st. This is a follow-up to concerns on our on the West Des Moines Historical uh, Committee for, for <coughs> funding that we're um, trying to set design plans and um, we're trying to call on the businesses for the new funding agenda and we're very concerned that we're not hearing from the public. So there was a letter that went out on March 31st and uh, we just had our monthly meeting from the Neighborhood Association and out of that, I mean, we've got strong concerns about the committee. Um, it's really just all about, the discussions are all about the businesses, not about the residents. And we're hoping that what we could come up with is something that across the border with the residents, and we have a good, um, a good petition or a good pull on what the residents actually want. So uh, through our organization, through the Valley Junction Neighborhood Historical um, Neighborhood Association, we're a mix of both businesses and residents. So instead of it just being for the residents or just being for the businesses, we have a good, we, you know, we've got a, a good unbiased <coughs> position on both sides. And we can see all arguments. We're having good um, conversations. But Saturday's meeting ran on overtime. And we're very concerned, and anyone that has participated in the committee meetings, I think, can also attest that really we're only hearing about the businesses. And I can understand that when a strong portion of the committee is made up of foundation members, so they are representing only businesses. But again, we go back to the legacy that we're, the heritage that we're trying to keep in Valley Junction, what the neighbors actually want to see in Valley Junction, and a, you know, a, a legitimate strong pull of enough people that show actually you folks what everyone wants and then um, present it to the committee. I guess I would respond to that. I called Nick this morning, had a conversation with him, and you know, Nick had concerns with the process and, and uh, a comment that was made uh, at the committee meeting uh, based on a poll that an individual did on their own uh, accord mm -hmm. and then uh, the ensuing vote uh, when talking about railroad and the height of buildings that would be allowed in railroad. And that being said, I I'm extremely impressed with how much this committee has broke this thing down to a micro level where they were actually talking about both sides of the street and not only both sides of the street but quadrants and different heights based on different quadrants. and. Um, you know, we made sure when we set this committee up, which was an idea that actually came from your neighborhood association group out of Nate Hahn, that we had a very good balance of people on this committee. And so we wanted to make sure that we had some folks that represented your neighborhood association, folks that represented the neighborhood association that Longs are a part of, and uh, Ed Engler. Uh, wanted to make sure that we had business folks, uh, Valley Junction Foundation folks, and we felt that um, the group of people that we put together was very representative of the interests down in Valley Junction. And so it is through this process that people have a chance to voice their concerns. I know a number of the folks that go to your neighborhood meetings show up and provide public comment there. Um, you know, to, to say that people were swayed based on a comment of one individual in the poll that was taken by that one individual, that, that's just not the way it goes. Anybody up here on the dais could make a claim of something and people aren't going to vote based on that one thing that somebody says. They're going to look at all of the information and take it all into account. But from what you're talking about with the residents and business, it's important to all of us to make sure that we have a balance with residents and business in everything that goes on down there. And I think that's what's being done. If you're asking if we're gonna go out and do a city poll to every single person sitting down in Valley Junction and ask where they stand on this issue, that is not the intention. It's through this committee process that we're getting that input from the citizens. But I talked to Nick and I said, come on into the council, explain your concern, explain uh, you know, what your worries are with the process and, and what you'd like to see happen, and certainly we'll listen to that and take that into consideration. Thus far in the process, we have tried to not stray too far from what this committee has been recommending. I think we've taken everything that they've recommended and implemented that, and even gone maybe a little further. Um, so we are open to your concerns. Come in, express those to the council, but I don't think we're interested in going out and doing a brand new poll of every resident in that area uh, and then reversing the decision of this committee that 
was the idea of your neighborhood association to get everybody's feedback and input and make decisions. But we do not have to implement everything that comes out of that committee. So come and share your concerns and we will take those into consideration. Yeah, and we appreciate that. And we yeah. also appreciate setting up the committee. I mean, we, yeah. we, we definitely were a part of that and appreciate that. But if you look at the makeup of the committee now and you look at the information that we're missing when folks do come and speak, that we're not hearing the residents. The conversations through the meeting what's run by the meeting are really only by the businesses, and I can understand their position, but as the businesses, I mean, there's a lot of businesses that do not, that are not on the committee that do not agree with it either. So you could even say another poll on the business side of things, but you're missing a big picture of the feedback that you're getting from the residents. We did try to um, present a petition or poll, and um, we've got a lot of signatures actually already that you're also well aware of. So those just do not in line with what's coming out of the committee votes when those, I mean, it's really, it's really stacked against the residents on what it is that they want for an outcome. It's really the final decision with the makeup of the committee as it is now, today, and that has to do with a few different things that have changed within the committee members and the Valley Junction Foundation as a whole. We've got a lot of feedback on that too, but um, you're definitely not hearing from the residents, and we know that you want to have that information. Yeah. So it's a, yep. it's a big missing piece right now. We had a pretty strong long group, and we've got a lot of signatures, and, and residents are really even, you know, as soon as they do speak, they get shut back down. That's the perception when, when they do come in and speak. So. But it, well, Go ahead, Renee. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to weigh in on this. And as a city council person that has been at almost every meeting, and I did miss the last meeting because I had another commitment, but I have been at many of those meetings, and they are full, quite a few, they're full with residents that have come, and each person that has wanted to speak, Meredith has allowed them to come forward and speak and speak and speak and speak, and we've listened. And so I, I do want to say, Renee, I, I agree that we want the residents to weigh in on these issues, but I also want to say, as a person that has sat through evenings of meetings that are four hours long or three and a half hours long, there are lots of residents in that, in, in, in that meeting, and there are a plethora of them that come to that microphone and are given time and time to speak by Meredith. Maybe not all the ones that you would like to see, but I'd like to say that it's been a, a pretty fair process of anyone that's wanted to speak on the issues that are at hand for the day. They've been given the opportunity and have spoken. I would agree with that. I, okay. There's no issues with everyone that. speaking. It's the actual final outcome of the vote. It seems just on the committee, it's all based on what the recommendations are from TESCA. And that's not what the neighborhood or the residents necessarily want. But so I, there are residents that vote on the There are residents that vote and represent the residents on this committee. So they have a vote and they are voting per the interests of the residents. So. I see Vicki Longhill, she's a resident. Nate Hahn is a resident and others. So there are residents on that committee right. that get to cast their vote per their desire. And, and I think are given the opportunity to represent the residents. Exactly, exactly. But Let, let's, uh, so. let's, let's have the people come in. Let's have a conversation. Let's hear what some of your concerns are and we can see if we can address those. We realize that we're not dealing with a blank slate down there. We've got residents that live there and we've got businesses that operate there and we've got to strike a good balance. But what we're trying to avoid also is somebody coming in here, taking committee action, and then somebody going and try to reverse that committee action. You guys would not like that if, let's say, you got something passed through that committee that you uh, that was uh, something that you wanted to have happen, and then all of a sudden the businesses went out and started doing signatures and taking polls and came to the council and, and lobbied us to change it, and we over overrode what you guys voted on. I mean, you'd be up in arms. You'd be the first ones in here yelling and screaming about it. So we're trying, if we can at all possible, to take the recommendations out of the committee while also listening to the residents and weighing that. But so far we haven't, we've had some, some things that a lot of people have liked and some things that people have not liked. And Agreed. we've gone with the recommendations. We haven't changed, good or bad, we've gone with it as a council. So we're trying not to stray from that. Too much. And that's why, and that's why we're here now. We wanted okay. to explain to you that the way the committee, the setup of it, the way it is right now is really outnumbered or what, I mean, it's just, there's no way that the residents are going to win on any of the votes the way it is right now. And I know that's not the information you want to come out of the committee for something being fair and balanced. Okay. And that's because of things that have changed throughout the committee, okay. not as it was originally set up. 
All right, well, we'll continue to have dialogue on that. Thanks for coming, okay. Renee. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else, else for Citizens Forum? Good evening. Vicki Longhill, uh, 136 10th. Um, I, I felt like it's necessary to say something further as it relates to the committee. And um, I don't know anything about a petition meeting or anything that's been presented, so I'm not speaking on behalf of anything in that regards. However, um, I have noticed in the meetings that um, residents are very concerned and there's anxiety amongst them. They've had an opportunity and we have had an opportunity to speak. But when it comes to voting, even though residents on the committee does vote, our votes still don't meet the number. All of the residents can vote for uh, interest in what um, we would like to see in the Valley Junction area. So I just want to say, in that regards, I am um, concerned about that too. And if you want to include me in any discussions, feel free to do so. We welcome Thank that. you. We will do that. We welcome that. Thank you, Vicki. Anybody you. else in the audience for Citizens Forum? <clears throat> Please uh, give us your name and address for the record. I'm Tina Shine Flew at 107 10th Street. I also own 103 10th Street. We're right there on the corner there. Um, currently, uh, the business behind me has a food truck. And I thought it was just going to be a short time thing, but it went on the entire summer. That it's really hard to spend any time in my backyard. In my front yard, I have the hall and all the people that sit out and have a drink. Um, so I'm probably going to get upset because it really bothers me that now you're going to put three-story buildings along the railroad. And even if you put trees up there, even if you put barriers up there, there's still going to be another, another floor up there. It's going to be able to look down on every little part of my backyard. I'm going to have absolutely no privacy. Appreciate your comments. Like I said, we'll continue to have dialogue on this. Um, and uh, hear the concerns of the residents and also weigh the committee vote as well. So anybody else from the audience who'd like to address the council? Okay, seeing none. Anybody online that would like to address the council on Citizens Forum, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Star six. Okay. Seeing none, Citizens Forum is closed. We will move on to item three, Mayor, Council, Manager Report, other entities update. Uh, and we will start um, with a presentation of a check for a historic West Des Moines pilot housing program. Um, <coughs> Northwest Bank is here. Uh, Don Nickerson, who's the regional CEO, and Travis Simpson, who's the regional president. president. So, gentlemen, the uh, floor is yours. to us. This is going to be a huge uh, program, several programs in the historic Valley Junction area that's going to help beautify the homes down there, as well as get some people, uh, low and moderate income folks, into some housing. So this means a ton to us. Can't even tell you how much we appreciate it. So. Nice. We're glad you're part All of it. Right. Thank you Everybody so much. Clap. Yes. Our 
resident of Valley Junction last Thursday. So. Oh, we're not. Yeah. 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 I told them about it. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, gentlemen. Really appreciate it. All right, moving on to council reports. We're going to start with Councilman Lotes. Um, two quick things, real briefly. Um, uh, first of all, happy birthday, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank you so much. You guys are reminding me how old I am. Appreciate it. He's 50. <laughs> the second thing I want to say is um, I'm, I'm really proud of our city for the proclamation from Mr. Parks. Um, I never met the man in life, but I was able to go to his wake. Um, and, and, and meet him for the first time. And I, I'm, uh, I was able to pray with him a little bit and, and, and hope that he provides guidance to our council um, um, and looks over us as we move forward. So um, it's people like him uh, that have come before this council and, and given their time and their talents and their energies and people like him who are really groundbreaking citizens. Um, and they set the table for all the good things we have in this town right now. So thanks to Mr. Parks, that's it. Thank you so much, Doug. Okay, Councilman Trevelyan. Yeah, I just want to, uh, again, thank Bob for everything that he did for this city. As you know, I uh, took over the seat that he held uh, for 16 years. Uh, he did a great job with it, and uh, I'm trying to uh, follow in his footsteps and continue that great work for the First Ward and for all of West Des Moines. So thank you all for showing up for uh, this pro proclamation, and I'm proud to be able to uh, give this proclamation in his honor. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Councilwoman Hardman. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll reserve comments about Mr. Parks uh, until we read the proclamation. Um, I just want to uh, reiterate for the West Des Moines Human Rights Commission, of which I'm a liaison to, I really do want to thank them for their uh, foresight and the organizing of the Ukraine vigil. It was very well attended. Um, just a really wonderful demonstration of what we can do as the city of West Des Moines to show our support. So great leadership in the West Des Moines Human Rights Commission. I also um, chair of public safety and um, um, had a very long meeting with uh, Councilman Hudson, of which we discussed a new policy that is being brought forth regarding honorary street naming and naming a street, an honorary street after someone. I wanna share with you that uh, presence matters in the room and citizens' engagement really, really matters. And we had a citizen, Rachel Long, at our last meeting, and I know Vicki has come to previous meetings, and I will tell you that their input and their push and pull, and there was push and pull, on what is included in this honorary policy uh, was very helpful and actually actually changed the course of where we were going. And so I want to say that when citizens come to the table and they voice their opinions and they voice their concerns, it truly matters and help us shape direction that we're going. So that last meeting, which was uh, uh, Rochelle was at, and she's sitting in the room here today, coming to a seven o'clock meeting or so to say this matters to citizens of West Des Moines, of which we discuss sunset rules, of which about naming streets, petition requirements, color of signs, size of signs, paying for a sign or not paying for a sign and the longevity of honorary signs. So I wanna say thank you for helping us frame a policy that I think is going to be good for the city and will make uh, folks proud when they present applications for what will be the first time in a long time probably ever of having honorary streets named in West Des Moines. So I was proud to be in that seat, and proud to listen, and proud to be able to bring a policy to this council for review very, very soon. So thanks for your patience and your input. Appreciate it. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> Councilman McKinney. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, uh, too, want to just uh, take a moment to um, 
recognize Mr. Parks for his service to our community. While I did not have the opportunity to serve with him, of course, um, I did not have the opportunity to work with him. I've spent a lot of time with folks that have over the years and understand that his leadership style, his connection to the community, his, uh, his you know, true uh, intent to leave this place better than he found it, um, it leaves us where we're at today. Um, and uh, so I'm grateful for that, um, and I appreciate everybody being here for it. I appreciate uh, the proclamation that you'll be uh, signing or reading. Um, similar to uh, the uh, Ukraine uh, peti uh, not petition, but uh, proclamation um, that you had uh, two weeks ago, uh, a, a great gathering of folks. So um, I, I'll just say we had a, a extended uh, meeting this morning, development and planning meeting. Uh, Councilman Lotes uh, happened to be there. And um, I think uh, we have uh, an item on the agenda tonight related to some development. Um, in short, it was uh, somewhat controversial, and uh, I think it's going to be delayed a bit, but it relates to multi-family multi housing along Mills and I-35 there. So um, when that comes before you, we'll, well, I guess we'll address it at that point. So that's all I have at this time. Thank you so much, Matt. Councilman Hudson. I would also like to echo so many comments. I think any time that someone breaks new ground, um, just like Council Member Parks did so many years ago, I think it's worth recognizing and I think it's worth celebrating because as we look through history, there's so many people who break through, uh, just break through barriers, break new ground, and certainly uh, we honor him. Um, I was also at the Ukraine uh, vigil, and so hats off to everyone who helped organize that. And uh, on just a point of personal privilege, Milton uh, Cole came up and, and spoke earlier. And, you know, today in class, on Friday in class, we watched the entire I Have a Dream speech. And then today in class, we were talking about Selma. And if you didn't know, uh, there were about 250,000 people who went to Washington, D.C. in August of 1963 to watch Dr. King and so many others, including John Lewis, give uh, so many good speeches on that march on Washington for jobs and freedom. And uh, one man who was in that audience uh, was Milton Cole. And then two years later in 1965, in March of 1965, uh, there were marches on Selma, from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, to deliver a petition for voting rights uh, to the governor of Alabama because voting rights were being denied so thoroughly throughout Alabama. And there was another fellow who was down there in Selma marching, and it was Milton Cole. And I don't know how many people are alive 57 years later who were both participants of the I Have a Dream, I'm sorry, the March on Washington to hear the I Have a Dream speech and who were there to march on Selma, but it is probably not that many left. And so I just wanted to uh, uh, just give Milton a, a round of applause because he is a part of our city and he's certainly a part of American history. And knowing Milton, he would probably say, you don't need to do anything like this. And and, but I think we all are aware of uh, Milton's contributions to the city over the years, so we're very grateful for him and grateful for your thoughts. Of course. Um, on a more mundane note, uh, we had a finance administration subcommittee meeting, and uh, we discussed more about the property improvement fund and the regulatory compliance fund, uh, which we'll be uh, voting on later tonight. So glad we're moving forward to that to give folks in Valley Junction, to give uh, business owners in Valley Junction an opportunity to update fire sprinklers with some help from their city. So excited about that. Perfect. More mundane, but still important. Important, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. City Manager Haddon. Yeah, real quick, uh, I'm Bob Parks. Uh, actually, when I was a director at Metro Waste Authority, Bob was a chairman of the board and a board member there representing West Des Moines. Uh, I had great respect for Bob and really enjoyed working with him. And I believe uh, Terry's Cobble Johnson's out there somewhere, isn't she? Terry, you worked with Bob, didn't you? Yeah, so it was a great experience on that. Uh, another note, uh, the RecPlex, if you've been down Grand on the weekend, you'll see a sea of cars. We, we had major volleyball tournaments, girls volleyball tournaments. Uh, this weekend we have wrestling tournaments, boys and girls, basketball tournaments. So it's bringing in, uh, I would have to say, thousands of people to our city and hope, and going throughout and, and, and visiting our businesses and uh, hotels and other, as, as we thought it would. I mean, this isn't every weekend, but these are the big events. But um, it's, it's really been a great opportunity. We're learning on the run. We're learning as we go what we need to do to address the crowd. So it's a great experience for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Um, I, I would just mention uh, one thing, and that is that after 38 years, we had Captain Jim Barrett um, retire, and we had a retirement ceremony for him uh, in front of a sea of people. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to stay to hear Jim's remarks. Uh, people that know him know how funny he is. Uh, but my God, what an unbelievable uh, career of service that he provided to our city. And so I just want to thank Jim. We're going to miss him uh, a lot, but wish him the best in, in retirement. And like I said at the, uh, at the event, and you know, I hope that he pursues uh, something in stand-up comedy because he could have audiences really rolling. But uh, thank you, Captain Barrett, for, for your service. We'll miss you. Um, and uh, with that, um, we'll move on to uh, item four, consent agenda. Um, we, uh, well, I recognize Renee to pull an item. Yeah, I'd like to pull item four O. Oh. Four O is, are there any other items that anybody <laughs> like to have pulled? Uh, item four L1. Four L1, okay, any other items? Okay, if not, I would uh, vote for the remainder. Okay, is there a second? Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 4L1, resolution order and construction, West Des Moines Digital Enterprise, last mile conduit deployment, segment five, phase three. I believe Matt pulled this due to a potential conflict of interest. That's correct, I'll be uh, abstaining, thank okay. you. Okay, move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, please vote. Uh, Renee. Four yes, one abstention due to potential conflict of interest. Okay, uh, item 4-0 uh, is the proclamation for recognition of Robert Parks. Um, you know, and I thought that it was fitting uh, Bob Parks was the first African-American male to serve on the West Des Moines City Council. And our very own Renee Hardman is the first African-American female to serve on the West Des Moines City Council. And so I thought that it would make most sense if Renee would honor Councilman Parks by reading the proclamation. Before she does that, I just wanna say uh, how much Bob is gonna be missed. I didn't get to serve with him either, but he was a great man, had a great sense of humor, always was cracking jokes when you'd see him. He had a very strong handshake, and uh, you know, with uh, Bob and, and Loretta, uh, Jim Sandager, and Steve Gare, and uh, Gene Meyer, you know, these folks really laid the groundwork for our city to be what it is today. They took a gamble on Jordan Creek Town Center, and it really paid off in dividends. So we are going to be forever eternally grateful for the work that Councilman Parks did with his colleagues to set our city up for the success that we are experiencing today. And we will miss him very much. So with that, Councilwoman Hardman, if you would do the honors of reading the proclamation. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for um, this honor and really, quite frankly, this privilege. Um, it is really fitting to see the audience here tonight to recognize what kind of impact this man has made. There are many things that we get to do as city council members, but nothing is more noble than honoring a citizen who has made such a measurable difference in the lives of so many. Uh, Mr. Parks, we know, was a trailblazer. He was a former city council person, first African-American city council person, but he was a neighbor, he was a friend, he was... Um, Everything that embodied public service, he was. He was gracious even in defeat. He was gracious even when things were tough. He never knew a stranger. So um, I really appreciate the opportunity to have worked with our city clerk in putting together this proclamation. His family is present, part of his family that is still here is present and we will have a presentation of this proclamation to his family after the reading of it. But the proclamation states, Proclamation of Recognition for Mr. Robert Leon Parks. Whereas Robert Parks made history when elected as the first ward council member in 1994, as the first African-American city council member for the city of West Des Moines, and he served tirelessly 
as an excellent representative for the citizens of West Des Moines for 16 years. And whereas Mr. Park served with loyalty and distinction during a period of significant growth and development in the city of West Des Moines. And whereas Mr. Parks served on the Metro Waste Authority Board and Metro Transit Authority Board, holding chairman positions for both. And he also served as the Wastewater Reclamation Authority Metropolitan Planning Organization and Council Roundtable. And whereas Mr. Parks was committed to diversity, social justice, family, and uplifting the community through service. And he lived his faith through those perspectives. And whereas Mr. Parks believed that everyone has something to offer, there is always something to do, and one should try to do what they can to help others. And whereas Mr. Parks continued to serve his community until his untimely passing on March 17, 2022. And whereas Mr. Parks was a friend, a neighbor, an advocate, collaborator, and esteemed public servant. And whereas West Des Moines is undoubtedly a better city because of the contributions from Robert Parks. And whereas the mayor and city council of West Des Moines wish to express their condolences to the family and friends of Robert Parks and express their appreciation for his exemplary leadership as a public servant and his efforts to improve the quality of life for those living in West Des Moines. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on this fourth day of April 2022, the City Council, staff, and citizens of the City of West Des Moines hereby recognize and honor Robert Parks for his lifetime of dedication to public service. Suzanne Poulter, 4012 Western Hills Drive. Um, I can't say that I'm going to fill them, but my father and my mother left some pretty huge shoes and impacts in this community. And I only hope that I can do the same and that's one reason why I moved back to West Des Moines, is because it's a place that I grew to be very proud of. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Welcome you so back. Much. And thank you for sharing your dad and your mom with us over all these years. Yes. Really appreciate it. It's a lot, to, uh, a lot for a family when somebody steps up and serves like that. So really appreciate it. Go ahead, Vicki, give us your name and address. Yes, Vicki <laughs> Long Hill, 136 10th Street. <clears throat> it's a pleasure once and again to be before the city council and it's more so of a pleasure to have been part of the history and legacy of our most endeared council person, Robert Parks. I can tell you that 
as long as I can remember, so I'm going to say 1968, I can remember Mr. Parks being involved with the work that at that time my mother was doing. And as time went on, they always took me along because I represented the youth, 4-H, the youth council, what have you. But it was my mother, Barbara Long, Miss Ruth McNerney, Miss Lena Rocha, and Robert Parks. And I recently, as I went through my mother's archives, came across a newspaper article, 1968, with uh, Miss Lena Rocha, Bob Parks, and other on an improvement committee or something. But the point is, is he was always there, and he became one of my mentors with the many others. And I was uh, talking to his daughter, Susan, about the times he was always there through college, you know, my grad school, back, my, my whole history and career, Bob Parks was always there. And he was interested in what was going on. But most of all, in the Valley Junction area, we made large strides during that time. And as a former council person, um, Loretta Seaman stated, they were there, and they had to make tough decisions. Some decisions weren't always welcome, but they were there, and they fought for the people. And from that came, you know, infill housing, affordable housing. We spruced up neighborhoods, beautified them, but Bob Parks was always there, and he would come to meetings. He'd come to your house. He'd come to your door. And I remember, again, my son um, and Susan, I think that was you all's first prom, and Bob Parks and I got together, and I remember those days. But he was always there as a mentor, and he continued to be one. Um, he was a champion throughout his illness. I heard he was sick, but you could never tell it at times. So I just want to say thank you to the family for sharing them. I know what it's about to share someone that does so much for the community, but he too have left a legacy that is worthy more than to be followed and fulfilled. And he's another one of my giants, one of my heroes and my mentor. But. I'm glad I had that opportunity to share those moments with him and learn. Thank, Thank you, Vicki. Thanks for sharing. Please give us your name and address for the record. Valerie James, 2900 Watchers Avenue, Des Moines, Iowa. Born and raised in Valley Junction, though. I'm Barbara Long and John Long's daughter. And I don't want to get choked up. I remember Mr. Parks, too, always being there. Even after he retired, he'd step into the center. He'd come into the community. How y'all doing? Y'all still doing OK? <laughs> Is there anything I can do? And then, too, he was also a member of Corinthian Baptist Church in Des Moines. And when you walked in the door, there he was. I said, all right, D. <laughs> he was a deacon there. But I just had to come and say, Thank you. It makes a difference. And it really makes a difference when we, as youth, recognize the shoulders we're standing on and recognize we have a charge, we have a legacy. And I am really proud of the West Des Moines City Council. You guys are, you guys are doing some great works and bringing the diversity in. We're working together. I can also remember Mr. Park saying, you're not always going to win. <laughs> Recognize. <laughs> we tried, we did what we could do, but you're not always going to win. But a voice, to have your voice heard is, you know, helps you to feel better about what's going on around you. So again, thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. For sharing. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else on Councilman Parks? All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for sharing your personal stories, and thank you for being here. It really means a lot to all of us. So.
We do still right. need a motion to approve that. The okay. Approval. Can we get, okay. Second it. All right. Just forgot we got to vote. Please vote. <clears throat> Thanks for keeping us on task, Ryan. <laughs> Something's wrong with my button. Five yes. I got it. Okay, uh, old business, uh, item 5A, a historic West Des Moines commercial redevelopment well, fund. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> thanks <laughs> for coming. Thanks for coming. I love you. Hey, thanks for coming, Al. Good to see you, man. All right, item 5A, Historic West Des Moines, commercial redevelopment funding. Uh, um, we have a resolution to amend uh, the property improvement fund, regulatory compliance fund, and the property tax rebate programs. Uh, this was an item that was uh, here before, which is why it's on old business. Um, I had asked that it go back to finance administration to work out some of the details uh, of the program. Um, what we're trying to do here is to do everything we can to provide for additional funding for those businesses that, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's out there. Yeah. Thank you. We're tr trying to provide for uh, more funding for businesses that are contributing businesses or uh, made to be contributing businesses in Valley Junction so that we can help preserve our rich history down there. And so what we have before us now are six different um, provisions here. Um, number one, uh, the guidelines of the Property Improvement Fund and the Regulatory Compliance Fund uh, are going to be amended to increase the allowable grant and loan from $75,000 for each program to $100,000 for those contributing buildings or ones that will be made contributing. Uh, number two, the guidelines for uh, those programs uh, will be amended to remove the restriction on the use of the property tax rebate program so that a contributing building or one made to be contributing will be able to participate and receive funding from all three of those programs. Number three, and I'll recognize you in a second here, Clyde. No, that's fine. We got, we're, uh, we're changing it. We've got a requirement on place in place that you cannot receive the funding in the city that would make it such that uh, city funding constitutes more than 35% of, um, of the total value of the property. We're moving that up to 50% for those that are contributing buildings, again, encouraging rehab. Uh, the fourth thing that we're doing uh, is uh, uh, oh, the guidelines for the, for the property tax rebate program are going to be amended uh, so that... Uh, um, we're able to go instead of from five years, 100% uh, tax rebate to 10 years, doubling the length of time that they can get that rebate for. And then we are also going in and carving out $80,000 for the cosign program to help uh, merchants to uh, apply and to receive a unique sign that stands out so that when you're driving up and down the street, you don't have to turn your head side to side, you can actually see that sign. We did this once before, it's not exactly the cosign program, but we're working on something like that. And to participate in this, residents have, or uh, businesses have to put in 20%. So those are the changes that are being made tonight. That's what we're considering on the dais. I wanna thank the FNA committee for working through this. And, and again, helping to put emphasis on rehabbing rather than tearing down businesses. I think this is gonna go a long way to do that. So with that, Clyde Evans, go ahead. Uh, Clyde Evans, Community Economic Development Director. Uh, I want to put some uh, more, I guess, meat on the bone in terms of what I'll refer to as the Main Street Sign Program. Um, and one of the things, I had an opportunity to talk to Steve Freebert, the director, and about how we want to proceed with that program. And first off, the program won't be able to start till July 1 in terms of the start of the fiscal year. And so what uh, I'm recommending is that the foundation put together what the program guidelines will look like and that that would be reviewed by the Finance and Administration Committee prior to starting the program up. Uh, also, uh, I'm proposing that they would be the ones responsible for administering the program. It would be a reimbursement type of effort and that the foundation would uh, be responsible for processing the paper, paperwork for reimbursement and that uh, any request for reimbursement would come to my department to review to make sure that everything was in proper form and everything else 
and then if it was, then the city would cut a check to the foundation uh, for that reimbursement. Um, so trying to put a little more, um, you know, meat to the bone in terms of how the program potentially would work, and then we'll work with the foundation then on coming up with very specific guidelines. The cosine program that we had had previously uh, was a program that was a uh, program that was started by the National Sign Museum. There was money in the program from a variety of different sources. The foundation intends to, uh, you know, apply for funding from other sources again. Uh, but uh, I thought it was important that we identify some of these things in terms of how we're going to proceed uh, with funding of that program in the future. Okay, thank you, Clyde. Can I get a motion to approve the amendments? Uh, Laid I, out here by F and A and a second, and then we'll take additional comments. I'll make a motion um, to the amendment with the additions that Clyde just laid out. I think we need to make sure that there is a program out there because, as Clyde indicated, the cosign is owned, was created and owned by the American Sign Museum in Cincinnati, Ohio, and that program no longer is in existence, but they still own the rights to it. So. I'm a little troubled in the fact that we say in this council packet that we're doing a cosign project program because we're not. So I appreciate Clyde talking, you know, in, in terms of a Main Street sign project. But I think it's important to make sure that we do have um, a program out there that doesn't conflict with anything that the American Sign Museum might already own rights to. So I think it's important that we make sure that uh, we get all of those. Um, I's dotted and T's crossed, and I appreciate that it's coming back to F and A. Uh, I also agree that it needs to be a reimbursement rather than just writing a eighty thousand dollar check, and we hope all the money is expended because, as it says in the council packet, that any money that's not used for that program will then go back into the regulatory compliance fund and property improvement fund. So uh, it's easier to reallocate that money if it hasn't already been check written to another organization. Yep. Great comments. Can I get a motion, a second, and then you moved it, Kevin? Yes. Okay, second. Is there a second. Second. Okay, additional comments. Uh, Doug, do you want to speak to it? I either Mike. Uh, no, no, oh, I'm good. Okay, sorry. Anybody want to? I'm just glad that go? we kind of retooled a couple things, and I think it's uh, we're in a good position here. Yeah, I think it's a good solution. I'm glad it came through F&A, and, and so yeah. let's move forward. Well, I appreciate everybody's work on this. I think, that, like I said, this is really going to help put an emphasis on rehab rather than tear down. And, and I think $800,000 is going to go, or 720000 is going to go a long way to continuing our efforts yes, down there. Absolutely. So, all right. With uh, no further comments, uh, please vote. Five yes. Russ, before you. Yep. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Before you move on, Clyde. Uh, our conversation the other day, you indicated that this week those applications would be available for uh, the property improvement and regulatory compliance, correct? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on, uh, item six, public hearings. We've got several tonight. Uh, item 6A, and this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider Glen Oaks Row Homes, southwest corner of I-35, Mill Civic Parkway, amend comprehensive plan land use map to establish medium density residential land use initiated by Paramount Destination Homes, Inc. Ryan, would you please read the date that the notice was published? March 18th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments of this hearing? The Planning and Zoning Commission, by a vote of six yes, one no, adopted a resolution recommending approval of the comp plan amendment. And there were also several correspondences received from citizens that were included with the council communication. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, anybody uh, in the audience who would like to address the council on item 6A, please come to the podium and give us your name and address for the record. Please limit your comments to five minutes uh, and be respectful and keep your comments germane to the topic. Anybody in the audience before I go to people online? Okay, <coughs> seeing nobody in the, in the chambers, anybody online that would like to uh, address the council, please hit star six, not pound six, but star six to unmute yourself and give us your name and address. Hello. Uh, my name is Robert Burns. Am I connected? You're connected and we can hear you. Just if you could, I'd ask you to speak up a little bit louder. Please give us your name and address before you start. Uh, my name is uh, Robert Burns. 
I live at 844 Glen Oaks Terrace, uh, across the street from the subject property. Uh, this proposal by the developer just came to light uh, uh, several days after the uh, notice was mailed. Uh, the notice was not directly mailed to our residents, so it went to the homeowners association first, and uh, so there was a delay in getting the information about this uh, proposal. Uh, so I wanted to begin with that. Uh, so we have not had a lot of time to talk to our neighbors or the in homeowners association that are involved in this, which would be the Greens. Uh, condominium Association and the Glen Oaks Owners Association. Uh, but to the actual proposal itself to amend the comprehensive plan, um, uh, I know uh, this uh, proposal is very close to I-35. And I know there is housing in West Des Moines already built along I-35. <laughs> However, I feel that this land is different. This housing is being proposed to be adjacent to an entrance ramp onto I-35 at the southwest intersection of Mill Civic and I-35. And the backyards of the that are shown on the drawings are very close to that property line and, and I I believe that uh, the noise from the, uh, from the motor vehicles accelerating onto the uh, entrance ramp will be intolerable for anybody who lives in those housings should it be built, approved and built. Um, that's different than being on a long stretch of interstate highway because the acceleration line uh, uh, lane um, it, traffic either is sitting at a stoplight going on Mill Civic either going uh, east or west and when the light changes they accelerate and create more noise just from the acceleration of the engine and the mufflers so I think it's a very poor choice of a location <coughs> medium density housing I think there certainly could be other places in West Des Moines that would be uh, much more conducive to a uh, medium density housing. The second point I wanted to make is that uh, this request is very unusual since the application, excuse me, this request is very unusual because the applicant does not own all of the land that's part of this request. He wants to buy it, but he doesn't own it. And that has to come before, uh, I believe, any action is taken by the city of West Des Moines. And I, uh, because there are, uh, uh, I believe that the, uh, the proper land use for this sliver of land is should be in the comprehensive plan should be parks and greenways uh, or PG or open space OS. Now it's also very interesting. The same point, Robert. You've got you've got one minute left. I, I want to make sure you get all your points in. You've got one minute left. Okay. Sorry. The land that he wants to buy. It, currently exist as a sound barrier. There's a 10 foot high berm, and on top of that berm is a six foot high fence. And that berm creates a sound barrier for the existing housing in the greens and a visual barrier as well. So I ask that you table this item tonight so we have more time for the neighborhood association to work on it. And I ask you, uh, after you table it, for you individually to go out and stand at the inter intersection and listen to what happens at, uh, during uh, the rush hour and ask yourself, would you live 
but you yourself live in a single family home on this site. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Robert. How much time do I have left? You got nine seconds. Do you want to yield back the balance of your time to somebody else? I don't know what nope. you mean. Go ahead, if you want to, I'm, I'm just oh, joking okay. with you. If you want to make another point, if you want to make another point, go ahead and make another point quick, but your, your time, you got about nine seconds left, so. Go ahead and make whatever other point, if you can rack it, wrap it up and make whatever other point you were gonna make. I'm gonna make it in nine seconds. <laughs> well, it, go ahead and make a last please. point here. That is my last, my last point is, please okay. vote no to amend the comprehensive plan or table the comprehensive plan until we can get more information to the city about the land that the developer does not own. Okay, I appreciate, Robert, I appreciate your comments. Um, you know, I, I, would just, I would just say that uh, this is a pretty, co a pretty common practice for somebody to take out an option on a land contingent upon the council uh, doing X, Y, and Z actions, you know, in this case, approving the comprehensive plan amendment and the amendment to the zoning. Um, so that's not uncommon, but um, I will see if anybody else has comments they'd like to make uh, online. Please hit star six to unmute yourself and give us your name and address. Star six instead of pound six. People make that mistake a lot. Anybody else for the public hearing? And I would just say, uh, we're also looking at approving a resolution to amend the comprehensive plan, and we're looking at making a motion to continue the public hearing for the rezoning to the April 18th meeting. So there is still plenty of time for residents to weigh in. Okay, hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. Um, like I said, we've got a resolution and a motion. Uh, we can take those at the same time. There are no outstanding issues. This came through development and planning with unanimous recommendation and came through PNZ on a six to one vote with Commissioner Hatfield uh, voting no. Um, <clears throat> is there a motion to approve the resolution? I'll make a motion to continue the entire item for two weeks. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, discussion. I'd like to keep them all together. That's just what I would like to do. Kevin, do you feel the same way? Yes. I don't like to mix and match. I would prefer to keep them all together. Okay. Any other comments? I'll say this morning we had a development planning meeting, and I know, uh, Renee, you probably got a copy of the materials for that. Um, and on the docket or on the item that uh, we considered this morning, a presentation from the applicant, um, uh, interested in different setbacks. And we heard, uh, you know, basically some setbacks from I-35, some setbacks from uh, the <clears throat> interior roadway there. And uh, the subcommittee this morning uh, approved moving those forward um, in terms of uh, consideration of amending the a PUD to allow uh, uh, different setback distances. Um, and we looked at a lot of different items. We talked about, uh, I know Mike Witzel was on, a fire marshal talked about how he had worked with the applicant to make sure that this wasn't going to be a fire issue and, and several other items. Um, so from that perspective, we didn't see concerns. And you know, certainly we talked about making sure buffers are built in and sound and, uh, and softening the, the look of things with different vegetation. But what we did hear uh, from um, a couple gentlemen that appeared on behalf of or at least one gentleman appeared on behalf of the, I don't know what association, Greens Association <coughs> Interior to Glen Oaks, uh, mentioned that the project couldn't move forward, at least in their mind, until there was some sort of sale of internal land to grant access to this area. So I don't know what the likelihood of, or, uh, of that happening or not is. Uh, I have no idea. Um, but, uh, and I understand this also has to go before, and Lynn was there this morning, I think she mentioned this may also have to go before planning and zoning as well. Okay. So I'm putting it out there that I just don't, I don't know where this falls with respect to um, the sale of the land. Be that as it may, this morning we agreed that insofar as this does move forward, we'd be comfortable with the setbacks. 
Yeah, I, I think the issue is that this came <clears throat> this came through uh, P and Z as I mentioned, and it was voted on six to one, and that is the resolution for approval of the comp plan amendment. Mm -hmm. I think what was planned here, as far as timing goes, was for the. Um, <clears throat> I think was the other item going to go through P and Z on April 11th and come to the council on April 18th. So the action that we're taking right now would would delay this, um, I think, more than a couple weeks, mm -hmm. right? Because it would have to go through uh, P and Z first before coming back here. Mm -hmm. Is that Lynn? Could you could you come up and answer some questions or whoever can respond to this? I mean, I guess what I'm what I'm wondering is how this would change the, the timeline. And I've, I've got a comment too when yeah. we get a chance, yeah. so. Yep. And I have a question. Lynn Tweet, Director of Development Services. Um, you are correct, the zoning aspect was to go back to the P and Z before it could come to the council. I'd have to look at their resolution to confirm whether or not it was, or the meeting minutes to confirm whether or not they deferred to a date certain. If they deferred to a date certain, it may be possible that we can have it on the 11th, the zoning aspect on the 11th. If not, we would have to do noticing before we could come back to council with both actions. Lynn, can you repeat that first part that you said right when you walked up? What was the first part you said? Lynn Tweet, Director of Development. I'm sorry, right after. <laughs> <laughs> right she got after. You, Greg. Right she after. Gotcha. <laughs> well She's played. taking over for Jim Barrett. <laughs> she answered your question. She answered the question. Uh, I'm not even sure what the first part I, I mentioned, but other than the, the intent was is that the zoning piece of this mm -hmm. would go back to the Plan and Zoning Commission before it could be acted on by the City Council. Lynn, I think what he's asking, though, is when you said something about you would have to check the meeting minutes to find out if they deferred to an exact date. Is that correct? Yeah, I had a couple yes. questions. That was one of them as well. Yes. So when, when you defer action on a public hearing item, because it's been noticed, the mm -hmm. way the, that it works is if you defer action to a date certain, we do not re-notice the item. If we just defer indefinitely because we don't know what meeting it will come back at, then we are required to re-notice that item before it can come back to the Planning and Zoning Commission or the City Council. All right, and what's the easiest way to find that out in the quickest way possible? I'd have to go over here, listen to the minutes of the meeting and see what they said. So, I mean, best case scenario is they deferred to April 11th. It doesn't get re-noticed. They meet on April yep. 11th, and both of these things come back to the council on April right. 18th. That and in the meanwhile, the, the residents have time to provide more feedback, have more discussion, and all of that, and really nothing is disrupted. That would be the best case That's if best we deferred case. to the April 11th. If not, we probably would could get the notice done, go to the P&Z on April 25th, come to the council on May 2nd. It seems like that okay. critical piece of information would be very helpful at this exact moment, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not mistaken. We can, well, I can try to research it during the meeting. I don't I know mean, Linda might even be I, I it guess right the now. question I have for the developer at this point, from a timing standpoint, what is this going to do to you from a timing standpoint? I, I want to make sure we're fair mm -hmm. to both sides and mm -hmm. keep things moving, but give time for question and answer and research and all that. If you want to come up, Jamie. Uh, Jamie Myers with uh, Paramount Destination Homes, uh, 2540 73rd Street in Urbandale. Uh, thank you for uh, hearing this today. And we're trying our best to try to hit a construction season and obviously have a lot of hurdles to overcome. And I feel, and as of this morning, even after our meeting, uh, I've talked to several of the uh, association board members and feel like we have made even progress since this morning on, a, there were just some finite little small things that we're trying to work through. Uh, I hopefully will see that those are, are resolved and I believe that that board is actually meeting as we speak right now. You know, hopefully we'll find that. So I would hope that we couldn't, would, we wouldn't get delayed because obviously I'm trying to hit a building season uh, to not have the streets finally, you know, just get done as the snow flies. So anything we could do to help, I would appreciate it. Sure. Um, but you know, certainly understand and want to be respectful of everyone's uh, working through this. So. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate Thank it. You. All right, uh, Doug, you had comments. Yeah. You know, you know I. I I'm, I'm, I'm challenged with deferring it down the road. Um, there's a lot of moving parts that have to happen here still and a lot of opportunity for 
residents to opine and things have to be worked out on the private side. Um, I believe our role as a city is to try to enable some of these things. And so I don't know that I would vote for the motion as it's on the table today, but um, I certainly understand why it was brought up. Um, so. Thank you for comments, Renee. Yeah, I, I just want to ask for deferring it. What, what, what additional thing are we going to, we're looking for? Was there improper notice? I, I think the notice was given. I think we're just, I, if I understand right, Greg, you want to have these considered at the same time and give a little bit more time for residents. Yeah, it, it, it strikes me that the residents want to, want to uh, participate a little bit more in this, but you know, if, if we find out that this will continue to delay, like if, as the mayor said, if this is best case and then there's no harm, no foul for delaying it and give our residents some more time to get their thoughts together, then I think that would be really good if there's no delay at all. And then we can take them all together. We can move through this efficiently, but we might find out right now the, the situation. Well, at the same uh, time, the resident well, did indicate, though, that the notices didn't get delivered in a Which is also concerning, matter. but yeah. Did they, did they or didn't they? <laughs> That's what he Question, said. First, Lynn Tweet, Director of Development <laughs> Services again. It was uh, the PNZ's action was deferral to the April 11th meeting. So that does not need to be renoticed. So we can take the zoning aspect to their next meeting, still be on the councils for all actions on the 18th. Okay. Now I that took a look at the 370 notice, and that's the key here is we do 370 feet from the boundary of that property, mm -hmm. which may not have hit everybody that wanted those notices. Sure. But okay. we do have a listing of what that 370 is. We have a map that we go by. Uh, we can provide that to anyone, but that's that's what was done is the 370 notice was done. Okay. But the deferral tonight, it is no harm, no foul. I mean, it, it doesn't delay the developer anymore, but at the same time, it also doesn't give the residents any more time because it will come back here on the 18th. So that, that no would be noticing. Correct. No more re-noticing. The question is whether that or not the council correct. wants to keep these together yeah. or have them separate, and I guess we will see in, in a vote in a minute, in a minute yeah. here. So. Now, as we mentioned at subcommittee this morning, the city can, can go ahead and move forward with their actions on the land use and the zoning. If the association, Glen Oaks Association, decides not to sell the piece of ground, and I don't know, can we use the dock camera, Brian? Yeah. yeah. The part that's in question, mm -hmm. and I can't see what I'm looking here, so. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can see there's a sliver of ground right here. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to sell that, there is no way they have access into this site, and it pretty well kills the project. Ooh. So it's still in Glen Oaks' hands whether or not the council makes the decision to go ahead and do the comprehensive plan amendment as well as the zoning and set the PUD up. If they can't get access to the site, that, that's a private matter that essentially, like I said, kills mm -hmm. the deal anyway. Okay. And can you pull that? Okay, there we go. I couldn't see that top right. arrow. Yeah, I have nothing to see where I've got it yeah. sitting. So I understood <laughs> one Perfect property right owner owned this, but you're saying the Glen Oaks Homeowners Association owns this land. Right. Gary Cook gotcha. owns this bigger piece. Okay. Glen Oaks Association owns this sliver that... <sighs> and that's access to the piece. That's where you have to cross gotcha. to get your access into the piece. Okay, well, that is a little bit unique then. Yes. Okay, well, we've got a motion and a second on the table. Um, one more, one more question. Go so, ahead, Doug. for Lynn. Um, so, by delaying this tonight, as the motion that's on the table and been seconded, we are not putting the developer behind in any way, and and it is a, it ultimately will be a two week delay ultimately because zoning actions take up to three readings. So, assuming we have yes votes on everything on the 18th, that would have been their. No, it really doesn't change it. I'll take that back yeah. because we weren't going to yeah, act on exactly. the zoning tonight anyway. So okay. no, but it also doesn't buy the residents more time either. Yeah. Right. It, so it doesn't help anybody in any way or hurt anybody in any way. Not really. Not really. So then it makes sense, I think, <coughs> for the motion. Um, either way. I'm missing something. I think the residents uh, that we heard from, as well as the letters, and you know, we don't get a ton of letters when it comes to things like this. And so if we can at least uh, make this gesture that yes, we heard you and it gives you more time, and yes, I understand that it doesn't necessarily give residents more time, but understanding that, hey, um, we, can, we can put these together in two weeks, it'll give uh, residents time to, to further explore this, so. The association holds the keys here too, right? Seems like, so. yes, they do. We might have an answer by the next meeting, it yeah. sounds like, uh, on that issue too. No. No. All right, well, motion to second that table. Please vote.
Five yes. Okay, that will be deferred then. Uh, item 6B, this is the time and place for a public hearing to consider the Westtown Commons 2501 Westtown Parkway amend the comprehensive plan land use map designation from regional commercial to office, repeal the Westtown Commons planned unit development and amend the zoning map to establish the professional commerce park zoning initiated by CT Development. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice was published? March 18th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments to this hearing? The Plan and Zoning Commission by a vote of six yes with one abstaining adopted a resolution recommending approval of the comp plan amendment uh, ordinance repealing the PUD and rezoning request. Okay. Anybody from the audience who would like to address the council on item 6B, please come to the microphone, give us your name and address. Anybody online that wants to address the council, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Okay, seeing and hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. We've got a resolution and two ordinances, which we have to take separately. Um, this came through DNP and PNZ, as well with Commissioner Crowley abstaining due to potential conflict of interest. Can I get a motion to approve the resolution? Motion for the resolution. Second. Okay, second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, an ordinance for approval, the first reading, uh, repeal the PUD. Can I get a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes, in order to amend the official zoning map of the city of Western Iowa 2019 by amending Title IX zoning, Chapter 9, Plain Unit Development District pertaining to PUD district regulations and guidelines. Okay, a motion to approve the first reading. Motion. Second. Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, finally, an ordinance approving the first reading of the rezoning. Can I get a motion? So move. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. There's something wrong with my button. Five yes, North amending the official zoning map of the city of West Des Moines, Iowa 2019 by amending Title IX zoning, Chapter 4 zoning districts and maps. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the first reading? So move. Second. second. Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 6C, this is a time and place for a public hearing to consider Kings Grove townhomes west of the intersection of Stark Drive and South 100th Street. Change existing townhome addresses initiated by the city of West Des Moines. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice was published? March 18th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And we receive any written comments of this hearing? Uh, there was one correspondence received from a citizen today that was placed in the dais in front of you this evening. Okay. Okay, and we've got that, it's in green here. Okay, we will make sure that we get this uh, entered into the record. Uh, anybody from the audience who would like to address the council on item 6C, please come to the podium, give us your name and address for the record. Anybody online, please hit star six and give us your name and address. Okay, seeing and hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. Uh, we've got an ordinance for approval of the first reading. There are no outstanding issues and this came through PNZ, or I'm sorry, development planning with unanimous recommendation. I get a motion for the approval of the uh, consideration of the first reading. So move. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, I, I think, I, well, I think we have the same question, so you yeah. go ahead, Matt. I just, uh, Lynn, I, I think you, somebody dropped this off, the materials we got from a resident, um, and it's an email that was dated from today, so I don't know how much time you've had uh, to review it. But, <laughs> Looks like a opposition to the concept and a counter proposal on how best to readdress a series of properties there and just like to understand yep. what your perspective is on this. Okay. Uh, Lynn Creek, Director of Development Services. So as stated in the staff report, this is happening, when this project originally came in, it was supposed to be 16 townhome buildings. So the way it was addressed was, was with a site address and then we use a combination of the buildings and the units to get to each one of the unit numbers. 
That site address, and you'll have to tell me again if you can see this or not, if I have to zoom in or out, but that site address was based off of the south end of the development because we considered Boonville to be that main access for this development. So the whole site was <coughs> 1590 site address. You can see right here is that when we look at the address grid. Can you zoom out a little bit, whoever's running the controls? 1600 is at the Boonville line. So I have, that's where I, I your Whoop. addresses will increase as you move south in mm -hmm. this area. So even though we have 1590 now, the first buildings that were built were built way at the north end. They were using the 1590 South Kings Grove Avenue address. <coughs> so my address lines, my grid lines are cutting through here. You can see the 1400, the 1500, and the 1600. So with what he would like us to do, and those grid lines, I have to go, and I don't know if wonky is an official term or not, but <coughs> it comes 1500 grid. You can kind of start seeing the addresses on each side of this. So we try to stay <coughs> consistent going across. You kind of have a way to do some wayfinding. If you're going down South Kings Avenue and you're seeing these 1540s, your mindset is, is okay, behind them next door in the backyard is going to also be roughly that number. So if we do what he wants to do and keep the 90 up here, I can get maybe three of those houses in the 1500 grid before I have to jump to the 1600 grid and put that 1600 then as the south end of this development. So my 1500 grid jogs, my 1600 grid jogs, I have 15s on both sides of this, which just kind of makes it odd. When I received that letter today or that email today, I kicked it over to our emergency response agencies and asked them, because I, I got all day, I can look on a map and find it. These are the guys that we're looking to make sure that it's logical for them. Uh, I heard back both from EMS and fire. They would like us to stick with the original plan, which is changing those addresses and keeping our grids the way that we typically would have it. So the 16 units that are up here, they would be re-addressed. We would actually give them a stark drive address in this action. The one building here that's built and facing South Kings Grove, we would still keep them at South Kings Grove, but each unit would have a unique address, just like a single family detached home has with a unique address. That allows us to work those numbers to the south, still landing with that 1600 following the Boonville Road. Well, I, I appreciate you explaining that. I mean, we, mm -hmm. years ago, we had an issue where we had to readdress south of the river, and there was a, a room packed full of people that were pretty angry, angry about readdressing, and they had readdressed already, I think, four times, three or four times. This was either their fourth or fifth, and uh, none of us wanted to uh, have them have to go through that process again. I imagine it is a gigantic pain in the butt, but, you know, this is this always comes down to not just wayfinding but public safety and so mm -hmm. i appreciate the alternative put forward but i just don't see especially with the response from fire and ems i don't want to put anybody at risk with taking an alternative approach to this i agree and having been a medic for 16 years and trying to find an address uh in the heat of the moment you do need to know that in this case 1542 is behind 1541 when you're going down another street or so I, I appreciate the the concerns of the residents on changing their address but in this case I think it's uh, imperative that we do it yeah and I'd like to um, echo those comments I really understand the frustration but you know I really do rely on the advice of our fire department and police departments with regard to safety. Um, that's why we have them here, is to provide us with this kind of guidance. And so safety and their advice really prevails in, in most instances in my case. I appreciate the comments, Matt. Back yeah. to you. Yeah, thank you. Well, Lynn, I appreciate you taking the time to, to go through this. I don't know if... Uh, it, there wasn't a public hearing on this, right? I, what I was going to say is I don't know if uh, this, Mr. This is the public hearing right now. Okay. I don't know if the gentleman that emailed us uh, was on the line here, but uh, if he is or if he's listening, we certainly appreciate, you know, somebody bringing this to our attention and not just kind of complaining about something, but also proposing a solution. And um, I appreciate that we 
went through the effort and you know communicated with public safety and I, I hear exactly what you're talking about um, yeah and and this is just a bad situation mm -hmm. but it was precipitated by the fact that the development uh, ended up changing and not mm -hmm. staying the course really that they had planned on staying so uh, this stinks and I, I imagine it would be difficult to readdress and but for public safety we've just got to do it so yep. Ryan, did we get a uh, consideration for approval of the first reading already? We did, yes. Okay, in a second. Okay, any other comments or questions before we vote? Okay, hearing none, uh, please vote. Five yes, and it's officially changing the assigned addresses of Kings Grove Townhomes, Plat 1. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the first reading? Motion. Second. Okay, uh, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 60, this is a time and the place for a public hearing to consider amendment to city code, Title IX zoning, modify regulations pertaining to operable storefronts and outdoor activity areas initiated by the city of West Des Moines. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice was published? March 18th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And we receive any written comment to this hearing? Uh, the Plan and Zoning Commission by a vote of seven yes adopted a resolution recommending approval of the ordinance amendment. Okay, anybody from the audience or online that would like to address the council on this item? Please uh, either come up to the podium, give us your name and address, or hit star six if you're online and give us your name and address. Okay, seeing and hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed and we've got an ordinance for approval of the first reading. Move consideration of first reading. Second. Okay, any uh, discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes, and it's amending the city code of the city of West Des Moines, Iowa, 2019, Title IX Zoning, Chapter 10, Performance Standards pertaining to operable storefronts and outdoor activity areas. Move approval the first reading. Second. Okay, please vote. Five yes. Item 6E, this is a time and place for a public hearing to consider amendment to city code, Title IX Zoning, modify regulations pertaining to requirements for garages and single family and median density zoning districts initiated by the city of West Des Moines. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice was published? March 18th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And we receive any written comments to this hearing? The Planning and Zoning Commission by a vote of five yes, two no, adopted a resolution recommending approval of the ordinance amendment. Okay, anybody in the audience like to address the council on item 6E, please come to the podium, give us your name and address. Anybody online, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Okay, seeing and hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed and we've got an ordinance for the approval of the first reading. There are no outstanding issues and this came through PNZ and DNP development of planning unanimously. Move consideration of the first Second. reading. Second. I'm sorry, I take that back. Came through as Ryan said, PNZ 52 and DNP development of planning unanimously. Okay, any uh, discussion? I got a question. Okay. What exactly, Lynn, is driving this? Is it these smaller houses, and what impact is that going to have on the rest of the city when everybody else in the city of West Des Moines has to have at least a single car garage? I don't like, you know, wavering from what we're doing in the rest of the city for one particular area. Lynn Tweet, Director of Development Services. Yes, what is driving this is a new concept where, and there's a, the next amendment also kind of plays into this. It's a new concept where they're doing single, fa uh, I'm sorry, detached dwellings and by attached dwellings in the same project, mm -hmm. all on one common, long, large common lot. It's an all rental product. Mm -hmm. um, it's been done a lot in the south and the east and it's just now moving to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Our code just doesn't set up to, to really do this very well. The way our code is and what this amendment is doing, and this is the one of them that in front of you right here is, this is the picket fences communities. Um, really what you need to look at is the ones that I kind of hatched in red are the actual single family detached dwellings. Everything else is an attached product. Some of them you can see they have garages already placed in them. So some of them meet that requirement already. But what this does is it takes it to single family, the way it is in our code today, it just states that single family detached dwellings had to have that garage. Mm -hmm. This amendment would say single family zoned 
properties, detached, pro detached dwellings and single family zone properties still have to have that garage unless they meet the 80% AMI, which we have a provision in code. But in this case, this would be a medium density project. Um, it'll be running roughly about nine dwelling units per acre. So this is a medium density zone property. And what we're doing with that is saying, we still want you to be able to provide either a garage or some kind of storage facility, or we want you really hiding the visual clutter that may come with people having things in their rear yard, uh, toys and things out and about. Um, this development's gonna have an association that's gonna govern it, but not all, not all of them will have a very strong association that may govern it. So this one just puts in place some options for when you are in a medium density product or zoning district, there's some options for you to provide that storage or that screening measures. So it doesn't change it for single family other than clarifies it's for when you have single family zoning, then it definitely applies that you have to have the garage. I, I almost look at this like an Uber, or a Lyft, a Airbnb, VRBO type of scenario where the current law, the current code, it just doesn't account for this kind of product. And so we're looking at amending the code to bring it up to date with a product that is currently on the market that the code does not address. Right. But, it, but if we vary from the code, we're going to be seeing more and more of these pop up. And you said it's going to be an association, but it's also going to be rentals. So one person basically is going to be president, vice president, and everything of the association. It's really no different than a, a, an apartment complex. An apartment complex has a manager that oversees the whole site. This is really the, the same type of situation. It just happens to be that they're detached and by attached dwellings. So it's, it's gearing towards the people that really don't want to be in an apartment, really don't want the right. yard to take care of. They have some private space out their back door. They have the parking in here. Some of them will have garages. That's more yeah. of a market thing, as we've talked before, mm -hmm. than it is necessarily a need of the development itself. And for, for this particular uh, item, I know, I think it was late last year, uh, Mayor, I think you were contacted. I think I, I, I know I received a, a message. Um, and frankly, I think somebody may have uh, been here during Citizens Forum about how the single family rentals and folks in these um, single family neighborhoods that are uh, renting are not keeping up the property, right? And uh, this particular, uh, for example, this particular project you have here and the guidelines we have, um, in this project, you've got one common person maintaining the area throughout the entire development. And so you try to avoid, you know, putting a product in the marketplace to avoid the hazards that at least I know I've been uh, reached out to uh, about somebody renting an area in an otherwise single family neighborhood and not keeping it up. And this is, you have common uh, management to ensure that things are kept up, that snow is move, uh, moved out of the way, that, that a yard is maintained, that weeds aren't growing. And, and in this particular instance, the way that I think you've drafted it, or at least as I understand it, Lynn, is you built in some protections um, that I've seen here uh, to ensure that you, you don't have that visual clutter. Correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so everybody yeah. will have at least a garage or a 10 by 10 shed? No, not in this development. No. Everybody that's in a single family zoning district would either need to have the garage or if they meet the AMI 80% AMI, uh, or less, they can have a, a just a 10 by 10 shed. But in this area, they don't have it. In this one, in the medium density, they do not have to have that or one or the other. They, they can opt to do a garage. They can opt to do a shed to have that somewhere to put those items that would normally be outside. Otherwise, they can do things just to screen it so that we're not impacting the adjoining properties. We're not having those views from the public streets of that. And again, because clutter. the current zoning code doesn't address it. I mean, you've essentially got apartments as single family and and de by detached or whatever mm -hmm. homes here. It's just something that wasn't contemplated by our current zoning code. Correct. Hey Lynn, when it comes to current medium zoning codes, there are no garage requirements, correct? Well, again, by the way, our code is today mm -hmm. because it just says single family detached dwellings have to provide that garage. Yeah. It, so that's where it's just, not, it's just blank right, right now. Right. It did but not say in single family zoning, zoning. districts. It's, it's zoning so versus the, the mm -hmm. property. But in so many medium density areas in the city, there are garages, but that's just out of practice and or habit and or market desirability. I can say we, we really have not seen townhome developments, which is typically thought of as medium density, that are not putting in those garages. Okay. 
it's an option mm -hmm. with something like this. It, you know, it just rarely happens at this moment. Rarely happens All right, for us, thank you, Lynn, and thank you for answering the question and finding out earlier. Really appreciate okay. that too. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. I I think this is a really unique product. I'm really excited to have this come to the market and uh, offer other housing uh, options for our residents. Um, so I, I think this is going to be a great development here. And uh, Renee, you want to? Yeah. Say something? You know, um, I do think that um, Councilman McKinney and I spent quite a bit of time on this initiative, and it it really is a little progressive. <laughs> it is really providing an option. Our city is evolving in terms of people and their lifestyles. And so this allows for this evolution to take place of the different distinct needs of citizens in this town. So um, we've seen renderings that are absolutely beautiful, quite frankly, and um, again, attracts a certain type of a resident to this place that um, can afford it, but yet not be encumbered by necessarily the garage requirement. So okay, it's very other, unique, and I think it's a, it would be a nice addition uh, to our city. I agree. Any other discussion before we vote? Okay, please vote. Four yes, one no. An ordinance amended in the city code of the city of West Warren, Iowa, 2019, Title IX zoning, chapter 10 performance standards pertaining to requirements for garages in single family and medium density zoning districts. Move approval of the first reading. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, please vote. <clears throat> Four yes, one no. Okay, item 6G, this is the time and place for a public hearing to consider Jordan Creek Tower vacation of 40-foot highway easement located across 575 South 60th Street. I think he's uh, 6F for us. Yeah, you should. Oh. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Trying to get out of here. Item, <laughs> item 6F, this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider amendment to city code, Title IX zoning, modify regulations pertaining to residential building form and residential uses initiative by City West Des Moines. Ryan, just please read the date the notice was published. March 18th, 2022, in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments to this hearing? The Planning and Zoning Commission, by a vote of six yes, one no, adopted a resolution recommending approval of the ordinance amendment. Okay, anybody from the audience who would like to address the council on item 6F, please come to the podium, give us your name and address. Anybody online wishing to address the council, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Okay. Seeing and hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. We've got an ordinance for approval of the first reading. Move consideration of the first reading. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, please vote. Four yes, one no. An ordinance amending the city code of the city of West Des Moines, Iowa, 2019, Title IX zoning, Chapter 5, Agricultural Open Space and Residential Zoning District, pertaining to residential building form and residential <coughs> uses. Move uh, approval of the first reading. Is there a second? Second. Okay, please vote. Four yes, one no. Okay, now, item 6G, the item you've all been waiting for. This is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider Jordan Creek Tower vacation of 40-foot highway easement uh, located across 575 South 60th Street, initiated by Dennis R. Alba Revocable Trust. Uh, Ryan, just please read the date the notice was published. March 23rd, 2022, in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comment to this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody from the audience or online that would like to address the City Council, please either come to the podium or hit star six to unmute yourself and give us your name and address. Okay, seeing and hearing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. We've got an ordinance for approval of the first reading. Move consideration of the first reading. Okay, is there second. a second? Okay, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, please vote. Five yes, in order of the city of West Des Moines, Iowa, vacating a 40-foot roadway easement located across 575 South 60th Street. Move for approval of the first reading. Second. Okay, please vote. Okay. 
Five yes. Okay, item 6H, this is the time and the place for public hearing to consider lot one, Jordan Grove, plat three, conveyance of permanent public access easement to KC Real Estate LC, initiated by the city of West Des Moines. Ryan, please read the date the notice is published. March 29th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments of this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody from the audience that would like to address the council on item 6H or anybody online, please hit star six to unmute yourself or come to the podium and give us your name and address. Okay, hearing and seeing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. We've got a resolution for approval of conveyance of permanent easement. Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 6I, this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider digital enterprise conduit deployment. Segment four, phase three, initiated by City of West Des Moines. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice is published? March 25th, 2022, in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comment to this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody from the audience that would like to address the council on item 6I, please come to the podium, give us your name and address. Anybody online, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Okay, seeing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. We've got two resolutions and a motion which we can take at the same time. Move approval of both resolutions. Second of both. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Four yes, one abstention due to potential conflict of interest. Okay, item 6J, this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider South Service Area Segment 3 Sewer, initiated by City of West Des Moines. Ryan, just please read the date the notice is published. March 25th, 2022, in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments of this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody from the audience who would like to address counsel on item 6J, please come to the podium, give us your name and address for the record. Anybody online, please hit star 6. Okay, seeing and hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. And again, we've got two resolutions and a motion which we can take at the same time. Move for approval. Second. Okay, any discussion? Please vote. Five yes. Item 6K, this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider Holiday Park Youth Baseball Field 3 and 4. Improvements, Phase 7, initiated by the City of West Des Moines. Ryan, just please read the date the notice is published. March 25th, 2022, in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comment to this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody from the audience who would like to address the council, please come to the podium. Give us your name and address. Anybody online, hit star six. Okay, I will declare the public hearing closed. We've got, again, two resolutions and a motion which you can take at the same time. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Sally, you might as well come up. Come on up, Sally. Uh, I'm glad to see that this is finally coming to completion. It's the last two baseball fields. Mm -hmm. Been a long time coming. My question and concern is the fields that have been done so far to date, are they staying in the same condition as when they were originally done? Or are we getting, God help us if we are, getting back to what brought us here in the first place with one part of the outfield here and the other part down here? Uh, Sally Ortke is Director of Parks and Recreation. I would say yes, they are definitely staying in the condition that they were in once we renovated them. Um, having the Iowa Cubs sports turf they're doing that maintenance makes a world of difference. I mean, these are people that know what they're doing. Um, you know, the baseball club had to depend on a lot of volunteers mm -hmm. and that works to some degree, but it also over time can cause issues with field conditions. Mm -hmm. So um, no, and we continue to get very high survey results. I mean, we're up in the 90% some percent satisfaction level. Mm -hmm. um, when we started this, I think we were around 52 percent. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, because I know when, when the Holiday Park Baseball Club was doing it that, unfortunately, um, staff was not, I guess, paying attention to what was being done. It's just they're taking care of it. And so I, I presume that we are doing the oversight as well as having yes. some professionals do it. So 
Excellent. Thank you. Glad to, again, glad to see this finally being. Yeah, it's exciting, completed. Sally. I'm sure your team is excited yeah. too. Great, great uh, questions, Kevin. Uh, and I, I'm glad this is, uh, they're keeping up on the fields and they're in great condition. And, you know, think back to when we approved this and how many millions of dollars we were being asked yeah. to approve. It was a little bit uneasy doing it, but we had been getting so many, you know, comments and concerns about the conditions of the field. And like Kevin said, people going to take a ground ball in the infield and, and it hops up or, or going from the infield to the outfield and it hops up over somebody's head. head. And, you know, the conditions were just really in, in uh, bad shape. And now it's like one of the premier um, ballparks in the region. So this is phenomenal. It's going to be great to see this get done and completed. So, all right, any other discussion before we vote? No, I just got one comment. I think I'm really proud that we invest in these types of things as a city because yeah. it benefits a lot of people, both people who live here and people who travel here. Totally agree. And we're getting a lot of tournaments because of these fields, too. Yep. So it's bringing a lot of people in. Absolutely. All right. With no other comments or questions, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 6L, this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider South 64th Street and Mill Civic Parkway intersection improvements initiated by the City of West Des Moines. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice was published? March 25th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments of this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody in the audience who would like to address the council on item 6L, please come to the podium, give us your name and address for the record. Anybody online that would like to make any comments, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Once again, seeing and hearing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed and we've got a resolu two resolutions and a motion, which we can again take at the same time. Motion to approve. Okay, is there a second? second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, this is one of those little things. So uh, definitely a big thanks to uh, engineering for setting this up. See Ben back there representing, uh, looking sharp. And the, <laughs> well, we don't see Ben very often. No, it's good. it is good to see him back there. Yeah. Um, no, but if you've ever been on Mill Civic wanting to take a right turn, it just, it just shuts down the entire right lane. So it's just those little things that will prevent accidents, make things more convenient. Uh, if you want to turn right from Walmart, but there's that one person in front of you going straight toward Kohl's, like, why are you going straight? Please turn right. It's those little things. And I guess I'm appreciative of the department for finding these things and then bringing them to us so we can uh, make our lives a little bit better. So much thanks to the entire team because it's awesome. a team effort. It's little things. Totally agree. I agree with you. Great. Great comments. Any other comments? Okay. Please vote. Ben, I'm sorry if I'm making you blush back there. Shout out to Ben. Okay. <laughs> Five yes. Okay, item 6M, this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider parking, park, parking lot and sidewalk improvements, American Legion Park and Meadowview Park. Initiated by the City of West Des Moines, Ryan, would you please read the date the notice was published? March 25th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments to this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody from the audience that would like to address the council on item 6M, please come on up to the podium. Anybody online, hit star 6 to unmute yourself. Okay, hearing and seeing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. And again, we've got two resolutions and a motion which we can take at the same time. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, please vote. Five yes. Item 6N, this is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider 2021 stormwater intake repair program initiated by the city of West Des Moines. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice is published? March 25th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. And have we received any written comments of this hearing? None, Your Honor. Okay, anybody from the audience who would like to address the council on M6N, please come to the podium, give us your name and address for the record. Online, you know what to do by now. Hopefully hit star six to unmute yourself. Okay, seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Uh, we've got, again, two resolutions and a motion, which we can take at the same time. Second. So Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, please vote. Five yes. Okay. Item 6-0, our last public hearing item. 
This is the time and the place for a public hearing to consider pedestrian hybrid beacon 52nd Street and EP True Parkway initiated by the City of West Des Moines. Ryan, would you please read the date the notice is published? March 25th, 2022 in the Des Moines Register. Okay, and have we received any written comments at this hearing? None, Your Honor. Anybody in the audience who would like to address the council on item 60, please come to the podium and give us your name and address. Online, star six to unmute. Okay, once again, hearing and seeing no one, I will declare the public hearing closed. We've got two resolutions and a motion which we can take together. Motion to approve. Okay, okay any discussion? Yeah, this is something that uh, is really gonna add to the safety of this. I've been driving up and down this road for 20 some years and watching people try to cross it all the time, so I'm glad this is going in. Yeah, you don't think about it until you think about it. And right. this spot, it's gonna be really helpful, so kudos to coming up with it. Yeah, right. I agree. This will be a great addition, so. All right, with no other comments, questions, please vote. Five yes. Okay, on to uh, new business, uh, item 7A. Kings Grove, Platte 1, uh, uh, Platte 1, Final Platte, west and south of the intersection of Stark Drive and South 100th Street, approved Final Platte to create 25 lots for detached single family residential development and three out lots for common area Kings Grove, LLC, We've got a resolution to approve and release the final plat. There are no outstanding issues. There is, however, one condition of approval, and that is that we waive the provision that prevents public utilities from being in the front lawn. <coughs> this also came through development and planning unanimously. Can I get a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. Any, any discussion on this item? Okay, hearing none, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 7B, Stonewood Platte 1, northeast corner of future South Grand Prairie Parkway and Boonville Road, approve a preliminary plat to create 40 lots for single family residential development and four out lots and four street lots, Stonewood, Inc. Uh, we have got a resolution for approval of preliminary plat. There are no outstanding issues, but there are four conditions of approval, and this did come through development and planning and P&Z with unanimous approval. I'm not gonna read every one of these conditions. You can all see that for yourself. Uh, is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 7C, Jordan Creek Point, southwest corner of 68th Street and EP True Parkway. Approve a preliminary plat to create two lots for commercial development. Approve a site plan to allow construction of two 17,000 square foot retail buildings. Jordan Creek Point, LLC. We've got a resolution for approval of the preliminary plat and site plan. There are no outstanding issues. And this did come through both development planning and P&Z unanimously. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the resolution? To approve. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 7D, 275 South 11th Street, Platte Survey, approved Platte Survey to create a 2.9 acre parcel for the transfer of ownership for future development. Dave Steffes, uh, we've got a resolution for approval and release of the Platte Survey. There are no outstanding issues, but there are two conditions of approval. Uh, and this was, uh, came through development and planning uh, with a unanimous recommendation. Can I get a motion to motion. approve resolution? Okay, is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 7E, 3120 and 3124, Jordan Grove Plata Survey, approved Plata Survey to create four parcels for the transfer of ownership, Tyler Marsh, We've got a resolution for approval and release of the Platte survey. There are no outstanding issues. And again, we've got two conditions of approval and I will not read those to you. Move for approval. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 7F, uh, Landauer Platte survey, uh, 12251 Moffett Lake Road. Approve the Landauer plat of survey for parcel 2021-205 to create a 1.4 acre parcel for the transfer of ownership, uh, Jeremy Landauer. Uh, we've got a resolution again for the approval and release of plat. 
Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. And there is one condition of approval on this, uh, and that condition uh, being that they would need to provide a revised plat of survey drawing with correct legal descriptions prior to the record recordation of the plat of survey. Okay, any discussion? Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, item 7G. Uh, we've got a redemption of general obligation bonds series 2013A and 2014A. We've got two resolutions which we can take together approving the refinancing of two bond issuances, saving the city nearly $200,000 or avoiding, I should say, avoiding nearly $200,000 worth of potential costs. And I believe with this refinance, these refinancing, we are almost up to uh, cost avoidance of about $12 million. So, um, can I get a motion for approval? Motion? Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? And we will go to this fine young gentleman here. Please give <laughs> us your eyes, name and address. I may need some adjustment with the glasses, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Ivan Weber, 1275 16th Street. I just have a quick question. Are, is the redemption being a matter that is already pre-approved pre in the budget? Or are you transferring funds from another source to do the redemption? Uh, whether or not the budget uh, impact has been uh, taken into account on this, no, uh, I what, do not. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, it wasn't an impact question. The question okay. was, was the redemption included as a budget item when the city adopted its present fiscal year budget? Or are you transferring from some other fund? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for that, I would ask Tim Stiles, our finance director, to come up and Answer your question. Tim Stiles, finance director. Uh, to answer your question, uh, the best way I would explain it is there are existing funds in our debt service fund currently, and those were levied in previous years. But because, as the mayor mentioned, we've refinanced things and saved interest of what we budgeted versus what we actually spent in previous years. We now have a, an extra surplus of cash in the debt service levy. So we decided it was best to prepay these and save some interest. No, you, you answered my question okay. by telling me that it was already in the debt service yes. levy. That was my question. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Ivan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any discussion from the council? This came through FNA and seemed like a good idea. So thanks to the entire team. All right. Yeah, absolutely appreciate this. Okay, please vote. Five yes. Okay, uh, item eight, receive, file, and or refer. Um, we will receive and file uh, a resignation here from the Human Services Advisory Board. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Jamie for your service and your contribution for the city. Um, I will look to uh, make an appointment very soon to um, fill this spot and request the, your approval. So, um, item nine, other matters. Are there any other matters that any council member would like to bring up at this point in time? Ben, come on up. I got a question. Come on up, Ben. Anybody that drove down Railroad Avenue today saw that we're uh, pouring some concrete on the south side of Railroad in the area of 11th Street. South 11th Street, and, and just wondering if you could explain to anybody in the audience or at home that may be watching what that takes, what is taking place there. Ben McAllister, principal engineer. Um, it's actually a parks project. That is the trail connecting uh, the signal at 8th Street, the crossing there, to um, the levee trail down 9th. Okay, so that'll come down 11th Street and tie into... Should, should be on the railroad ninth, down to 8th ninth, Street then. 9th Street. 9th Street. Street. Okay. Okay. Any, any other you. council person want to bring up any other matters? That will be a nice deal when it's, when yes. it's done. No doubt about it. Um, okay. Hearing none, I believe and we do not have any legislative update, or maybe we do. Well, I don't see Jamie. Yes, Jamie's at a conference, but... Okay. Um, the update is on uh, March 31st, the Senate Ways and Means Committee struck several divisions from the legislation for workforce housing omnibus, Senate File 2361. 
that the league opposed, including Division 10 on the State Building Code preemption, uh, Fire Marshal Mike Witzel spent a tremendous amount of time representing his association, uh, opposing the this uh, regulation that would basically, I mean this legislation would basically uh, uh, take us back a number of years in our uh, safety uh, area. So that's still, uh, as far as I know, and I ask you guys that are up there, <laughs> is that still holding? Did you uh, say it was struck? Uh, yeah, it was struck. It was okay. Well, I mean, you can always come back, but it right. was struck. I'll let Matt give the update, but I do want to thank the legislative committee uh, for how they played this because I think they played it exactly right. They were undecided. They worked with legislators to try to get an amendment. When it didn't appear, we were going to be able to get that amendment to pull out Division 10. You know, the, the committee decided to register opposed to make sure that they knew that we were not in, in favor of what was being moved forward. And I'll be darned, they actually pulled out Division 10, but now my understanding is that does the House have a version of this as well, Matt? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. I think the uh, Division 10 is out in the Senate version of the bill, as, as I understand the bill now uh, exists. It is still in the House version. Um, and so we are registered undecided on the Senate version, so we switched uh, from against to undecided. And on the House version, we are still registered against it because it includes Five Division minutes. 10. Yes, that's okay. correct. I, I, yes. Yeah, and I really do appreciate the recognition to the legislative committee, but I, you know, I am going to say I, I really want to give some recognition to our fire marshal, Witzel. For sure. Um, I think he has really he led the charge. As well. Yeah, I just want to give it to him. Yep. I think he has really led the charge and really has provided some really good information to that governor's office and um, to help with this process. So um, great leadership from our fire marshal and Chief Lou on. Uh, raising the kinds of concerns that we need to as a city and helping us get where we're at today. I know the struggle is still out there, but I really appreciate the work that they've done. Uh, Councilwoman Harbin, uh, your, your uh, recognition is absolutely well placed. I would also add that last Friday on the call, that we, our legislative call, um, Tim Coonan and, and uh, Sydney Gangstead had both uh, spoke very highly of uh, um, <laughs> Uh, Fire Marshal uh, Witzel on the work that he's done at the Capitol, the work that he's done uh, outside the Capitol, and you know I actually mentioned on that call that we needed to recognize him. So thank you for for saying such. Absolutely. Yep. The other item, Mr. Mayor, is a fireworks cell regulation preemption. Uh, basically, the fireworks zoning preemption was amended into the bill on the House floor, prohibiting a city or county from regulating or restricting the location of permanent buildings or temporary structures used for the sale of consumer fireworks in any location zone for commercial industrial purposes. So we have no say in that area. The state has decided to um, do that for us. That one worries me a little bit because I think where they're going to look to go would probably be Valley Junction if there's any place available. Yeah. You know? So. They can speak to the governor and the legislators. Yeah, what's, what's, what's going on with home? <laughs> It's going away yes. very quickly. I mean, honestly, this is really interesting. I mean, as local officials, um, I really feel that a lot of things are being eroded uh, about decisions that we get to make for our own municipalities. And I just think it flies in the face of home rule. I just want that noted for the record. It does. That's how I feel, and that's what's happening. And I think it's, 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 it's not good. Appreciate your comments. Okay. That's any it. other legislative updates? Any other matters that anybody would like to raise at this point before we adjourn into uh, executive session? We've got an executive session uh, for uh, pending litigation as well as uh, employment matters, I believe. I believe we'll do the workshop. We're going to do the workshop before first? Before the executive session. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. With uh, no other matters come before the council, we are adjourned.